Hello and welcome to this session on the Modigliani and Miller Proposition 2 formula. I am ACCA's Qualification Content Lead for the Advanced Financial Management or AFM exam. Many AFM candidates seem to struggle to apply the Proposition 2 formula and even struggle in some cases to recognize when it should be used. From the 2024 exam onwards, the AFM formula sheet has been adapted to include a rearranged version of the Proposition 2 formula. The rearranged formula has been designed to be spreadsheet friendly, although the previous version, as you can see, remains on the formula sheet. The purpose of this presentation is therefore to explain when you should and should not use the Proposition 2 formula, and also how to use it in a spreadsheet. To achieve that aim, we will review a worked example based on a past exam question. To get started, I have therefore copied the relevant information from a past exam question. This was a question which expected candidates to estimate the cost of equity for a company called Tipple Time Co. To be able to do this, candidates were presented with information about a proxy company called Hummerbuzz Co. The reason a proxy company is used is because it is exposed to the same business risk as Tipple Time Co's new investment. That means the proxy company's ungeared cost of equity will be identical to Tipple Time Co's ungeared cost of equity. Remember, the ungeared cost of equity removes the effect of financial risk from the cost of equity and provides a measure of just business risk. So let's break down the information candidates were presented with in the exam. Firstly, you can see that candidates were, were provided with sufficient information to calculate the proxy company's market value of debt and its market value of equity. There's a tax rate and Hamabaz Co's geared cost of equity and its pre-tax cost of debt. These are all inputs that can be used in the Proposition 2 formula, which is reproduced in the top right hand of the screen from the AFM formula sheet. With a little algebraic manipulation and simplification, we can work out the ungeared cost of equity for Hamabaz Co. and therefore Tipple Time Co. since both companies are exposed to the same business risk. In this case, the ungeared cost of equity is 9%. Now, this was as far as candidates were expected to go with this particular exam question because Tipple Time Co was an adjusted present value question, in, in which case the cash flows are discounted using an ungeared cost of equity. In other questions, it is possible you will be asked to estimate a geared cost of equity. When that happens, you will be provided with additional information about the company's own capital structure and its cost of debt. So for the purposes of this example, let's say Tipple Time Co's debt equity ratio is 50-50 based on market values. And to keep things simple, let's assume Tipple Time Co's pre-tax cost of debt is the same as the proxy company's cost of debt, i.e. 5.4%. Once again, we use the Proposition 2 formula just like before, but this time we are using it to calculate Tipple Time Co's geared cost of equity. We've already worked out the ungeared cost of equity of 9%. We know the tax rate is 30%. The pre-tax cost of debt is 5.4%, and we can use our assumed debt equity ratio for our market values of debt and equity. Putting all of those inputs into the Proposition 2 formula enables us to work out Tipple Time Co's geared cost of equity, which in this case is 11.5%. Remember, the geared cost of equity provides a measure of business risk and financial risk based on Tipple Time Co's own capital structure. To demonstrate how to use the rearranged version of the Proposition 2 formula, let's answer the same question as before, but this time using a spreadsheet. As you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, I've pre-populated the spreadsheet with the same inputs I used earlier. When we are trying to estimate an ungeared cost of equity, the easiest way to do this is to calculate the left-hand and right-hand side of the rearranged Proposition 2 formula separately. 
So the left hand side is equal to the geared cost of equity plus one minus the tax rate times cost of debt times market value of debt divided by the market value of equity. And if we simple, simplify the right hand side, our formula becomes equal to one plus one minus the tax rate times the market value of debt divided by the market value of equity. The young gear cost of equity is therefore the left hand side divided by the right hand side. And as you can see, just like before, our answer is 9%. We can also use the formula to find the geared cost of equity, which is as follows. Equals the geared, ungeared cost of equity that we just calculated, plus one minus the tax rate, times the ungeared cost of equity minus our cost of debt times the market value of debt divided by the market value of equity, which equals 11.5%, as you can see, just like before. In an exam, there are times when you will be expected to estimate the cost of equity but would not be expected or even able to use a Proposition 2 formula. To see how this works, let's review a worked example based on a different past exam question. Tom Pantar Co is an NPV question which expected candidates to estimate a cost of equity using information from a proxy company, this time called Bodvarico. The information that is relevant to the cost of equity calculation is highlighted in red and I will extract that highlighted information into the next slide. So on this slide, we have the relevant information we need from the practice platform. In this case, a quick review of the information available to candidates in the exam indicates that an equity beta has been provided for the proxy company. And this is highlighted in yellow. This is important because when an asset beta or equity beta has been provided, it will be much easier to work with the asset beta formula, which is also provided on the formula sheet for the AFM exam and is reproduced here on the right hand side of the screen. The information provided in this question tells us that the debt beta is zero, and that means we can simplify the asset beta formula, as you can see on the right hand side of the screen. Extracting the key inputs, we have the proxy company's debt equity ratio of 25.75, the equity beta of 1.6, the tax rate of 20%, and the risk free rate of 4.25%, and a market risk premium of 5.5%. Finally, in this example, we can also extract Tom Pantar Co's own debt equity ratio, which is 40.60. Based on the data we've extracted from the scenario, we can now calculate the proxy company's asset beta using the asset beta formula as follows. And that gives an asset beta of 1.263. The next step involves estimating Ton Pantau Co's equity beta using the asset beta of 1.263 that we have just calculated and Tom Pantau Co's own capital structure, which is 40% debt and 60% equity. This gives us an equity beta of 1.937. The final step involves applying CAPM using our equity beta estimate to get a cost of equity of 14.9%. In summary, Mudgliani and Miller's Proposition 2 formula is useful when you've been provided with information about a proxy company without an asset or equity beta. If an asset beta or equity beta is being provided, it will be much easier to use the asset beta formula. 
During the exam, it will be easier to use the rearranged version of the Proposition 2 formula, particularly when you are calculating an ungeared cost of equity. The rearranged formula is included on the formula sheet from the September 2024 exam session onwards. Thank you for joining me for this session and good luck with your AFM exam studies.